what we know from the national surveys is that women in general are fairly close to the minimum RDA. Uh, the average for the entire population in the U.S. is around 70 grams per day, which is above the RDA. But if you start looking at subgroups of women over 60, 40 percent are below the minimum RDA. That's why women have a big issue with sarcopenia and muscle aging issues. Of women under 20, I think it's something, it's not quite 30, it's like 28% are below the RDA. So at the two extremes, women are eating extremely low protein diets. Uh, and quality comes into that. Um, you know, if if you're going to be that low, all of the data, one of the things to keep in mind is all of the data for defining the RDA was done with high quality animal protein. It wasn't done with wheat. <laughs> it was done with dairy or eggs. Uh, and so what we think of the RDA is based on having 100% animal protein. Uh, so again, it's a it's a it's a it's a very low bar, and at the two ends of the aging extreme for women, uh, they're eating below that bar. Uh, so they're at risk around 1900, uh, even before we knew all of the amino acids. Uh, animal scientists had to figure out how to feed animals to get them to grow, and so they developed various ways of. Well, if we fed this, we can measure growth, or we fed this, we can measure nitrogen accumulation. Those were techniques we had back then. And so protein has, has traditionally been measured by nitrogen accumulation. That works pretty well in kids or young animals because they're growing, they're actually accumulating. But if you're talking about a 45-year-old adult who's in maintenance, basically they're not accumulating any new protein, they're replacing proteins, but basically they're, they're stable. That's a very poor technique to, to measure your requirement based on accumulation of something you're not actually accumulating. So, so the issue of not the, the measurement of the RDA has historically been based on short term, about seven day nitrogen balance techniques where they basically lower the protein intake down till your intake and your excretion, urine, et cetera, are equal. Everybody knows that grossly underestimates the actual protein requirement. Everybody does that. And the RDA is based on making that number and then putting a two standard deviation above it. And by definition, what that means is that 97% of the people shouldn't show any deficiency, but 3% will actually show frank deficiency at the RDA. That's the definition. Okay. That data was also all done with 20 year old college students, 20, 25 year old college males. So, A, the definition is healthy young males eating high quality protein. That's what the definition is. So A, 75% of Americans are overweight, so they're not healthy. A, they're not physically active. 50% aren't male. I mean, you kind of go on and on. The RDA is a very low bar at the end. 2002, the National Academy of Sciences, the Institute of Medicine said, well, that's not adequate. For every nutrient, we know there's a range of intake going from the RDA, which is the bare minimum, up to some upper limit. And so people have sort of been testing that for vitamin C and vitamin D and zinc and things like that. For protein, we don't have a really clear range, but we know it's near somewhere around three grams per kg, uh, you know, something above a gram per pound. Uh, and, and so we have a range from the minimum RDA of 0.36 grams per pound up to at least one gram per pound. Where you want to be in that can be a personal choice, but age, physical activity, type of diet all makes a difference in that choice. The worst case scenario would be a 70-year-old who chooses to be sedentary, who chooses to have a plant-based diet. Uh, and that's the worst possible set of circumstances uh, because you have everything going against you.